Question, if someone with a disability can't spar full contact but knows their curriculum and can do everything properly, good question. Good, good, good question. This one is also tricky because it goes back to the belts don't mean anything outside the school. There are people, everyone joins the martial arts for a reason, and most of the time it's to improve themselves. Whether it be they just want to fight better, they want to be faster, they want to live longer and healthier, or they're trying to rehab from an injury, or they want to compete, or they want to be able to protect themselves. Aside from those who do it just as a hobby, most people join the martial arts in some fashion to improve themselves or improve an area of their life. And it's not always about fighting. And as we talked about, we did this, we did an interview a couple weeks ago with Ian McLeod, um, a man with a traumatic brain injury who used karate to rehab himself and did wonderful, wonderful things and really came a long way. I think that you set your own course and you, is, you have to follow your own milestones and your own goals. And it's not always fighting because not every fight occurs out on the street. Not every fight is a self-defense against an attacker. Sometimes you're defending yourself from time, from an injury, from yourself. And I think it's up to the instructor to really take it, really look at each student as an individual and what their needs are and what their base, their base foundation are coming from is and make a judgment of how they're going to promote. Can someone with a disability achieve a black belt? even though they might not be able to fight a black belt in another system. That's up to the instructor. I think, I think it's okay in certain ways, as long as they have persevered and they have pushed themselves and they have accomplished, as long as they understand what they're doing. And here's the, here's the interesting thing too. It's about knowing the curriculum and understanding all the basics and understanding what you're doing and knowing the why. Sometimes in knowing the how, but sometimes being able to do it might not be there. So a lot of disabled people that I have seen will modify it. If they can't do a particular move or maybe they can't fight a certain way, if they can make modifications or that they can show that they can adapt the art to cope with or get by, even if that means finding new ways to get out of a situation instead of fighting them, then have they not have they not learned? Have they not reached that level of proficiency where they can defend themselves or they can modify the material where they have the same understanding? It goes back to the person who's 80 years old. They might not be able to defend themselves the same way they could before. They might not be able to move, but that knowledge is there. Can this person disabled? Can they teach? You know, it's that's a really hard question. Um, my jujitsu instructor talked about how he had students come in that were missing an arm. Can that person ever fight the same way as a person with two arms? No, but the techniques were modified to do one arm throws. There are exceptions, and I don't think anybody should be excluded from the martial arts because anyone, especially someone with a disability, who steps into that mat, they get more respect for me than people who are fully healthy because they have this extra challenge. And you know how much courage and guts it takes for them to get to a point where they admit they need help or they're desperate and they want to seek out some improvement and they step on that mat? That person is a brother and sister in that classroom. That person should still be expected to work just as hard as everyone else. They have... They have to work with their instructor and set their goals. They have to understand their limits. Understanding your limits is a big part of being a martial artist. Again, I'm at a point now where there's stuff I really want to do. There's stuff I could do, I can't do anymore. I'm not doing the jump spinning stuff anymore. I'm feeling it on my knees. I have some knee issues and I've got age related issues. It's happening. I have to accept the fact that there are things I will never be able to do in the martial arts as much as I want to do. A person who's got a disability. I can't even fathom the stuff they're going through because there's stuff, whether it's something they used to be able to do or it's stuff they've never been able to do, they are facing real challenges. And if they step onto that mat or roll onto that mat or whatever, if they come into that classroom and they put in the same work as everyone else. And at the end of the day, they can disseminate that information. They can understand it and they can pass on that knowledge and fulfill others' lives and touch other people the same way that they were touched then yes, I feel they've earned that rank. It doesn't always come down to how well you can fight in the street or how well you can perform in a tournament. A black belt is not a fighting mechanism. It is not a magic cape that you put on. A black belt is a symbol that you have pushed yourself outside of your boundaries. You've, you've broken your boundaries and you've reset them and you've broken and reset them many times. And you've now reached an area you're a much better person now than you were when you started. You understand the world now. You understand the pieces. You know what you have to do now the work it's really get done and build from there. So do I feel um, that they should hold belt ranks like everyone else? I do. 
And I think it needs to be an individual situation just because we all fight different battles. It's all about, it's all about why you train. We all have our own fights. Not every fight's on the asphalt. Not every fight's in the octagon. We have battles every day in our lives. And yes, I think the martial arts, and I'm so adamant about this, and I'm so passionate about this. That's one of the reasons that Zach and I started this channel is that this is a very important message that I think needs to be spread is that there's so much good in the martial arts. There's so much garbage out there on YouTube and so much garbage, so much hate, so much politics, so much, oh, look how crappy that is. Oh, here's the fake stuff. We've all seen it. It's all there. That's not what we want to focus on. There's so much good that's overlooked. And I don't care if it's a style that people don't like. There's still good in that style because it works for someone. Maybe you don't look at it and think, oh, that's garbage. That's never going to work for me. Okay, well, what are you doing with it? Are you going in the ring? Okay, it might not work for you. But guess what? That person's got a broken back, and that, that style has now helped them be able to walk again. Should that look be looked down as looked down upon than any other art? No. So, no, I, I have so much respect, and we have a lot of viewers who are facing a lot of physical challenges and disabilities, and – I am very grateful that you are a part of our channel because I think that message is even more important when people like that train because they are setting a better example than the rest of us because they're saying, look, I know I have limits. I know I have challenges, but look, I'm going to do it anyway. So yes, I do believe that a person who's got a disability who might not be able to fight or spar like a black belt would normally, that they can still achieve their black belt because they are fighting their own fights, their own battles. And thank you so much for asking that question because now you got me all revved up. <laughs> In a way, there are ways to deal with techniques like standing in an aerial position. Exactly. There's there's so many ways you could adapt something. Um, okay, look at look at Superfoot Bill Wallace, for example. He is an amazing fighter. He tore his knee up really, really bad when he was young. To the point it never healed right. Look at his work. He's undefeated in his career. Undefeated, and he can only kick with one leg. And what did he do? Well, he, he understood he couldn't kick with that leg, so he adopted all his fighting. He adopted a sideways fighting style. And guess what? He is really, really good at it. Can he use both legs and both arms like everyone else? No, he's basically down a limb. Has he made up for it? You betcha. Even now, I see this guy now. I see him in seminars now, and he's still a phenomenal martial artist. He's still going to kick you. He's still fast. He still can kick you in the head and faster than you see it coming. So exactly. So there, there's you just have to, and that's part of that. You have to find an adaptation. <laughs>